I had a foot in both camps and didn't fear those dreaded God-forsaken people who weren't Catholics. At least, that's what the nuns tried to instill in our heads during religion instruction in school. Thankfully, I wasn't too easily indoctrinated and kept my irreligious thoughts to myself. I was bored and intensely disliked the constant tug-of-war that the nuns and my Plymouth brethren and grandfather engaged in. The nuns endeavoured to say, save me from my Protestant mother's influence. Saving me from papist theology was my grandfather's mission in life, and I was subjected to many passages from the Bible if I made the mistake of blessing myself when passing the priest's house when I was in grandfather's car driving down the entire road to his home in Old Eric. He was forever telling me sadly, you haven't seen the light, you aren't saved. I'm sorry, Grandad, but that light hasn't appeared yet, so I guess that I'm not saved. The nuns were in a hiding to nothing, as their main argument being that my mother wouldn't see the light of heaven unless she became a Roman Catholic. That was how Carla was divided in those years. One has to leave their hometown and come back to see its true beauty. I had never realised how picturesque our town was until, returning from London, sitting on the bus as it approached the town, I noticed the backdrop of the Collation Hills, the majestic church spires, and the graceful vistage that was unfolding in front of me. Carlo had a charm that had escaped me in my teenage years when I longed to get away from what seemed a boring place with little to entertain one, except dancing in the Ritz Ballroom or going to the cinema and meeting the same people everywhere. Distant hills seem greener, but when all is said and done, our own hills are every bit as green if we only opened our eyes to them.